hippies by the name of Ben Carlin, who circumnavigated the globe in a little amphibious vehicle called Half Safe. I would like to know whatever happened to Ben and Half Safe. Well, this was a biggie for us, but before we answer Graham's question of whatever happened to Half Safe, I guess it'd be nice to know something about the story. Grant, it was a hero history buff, and uh, what did you get? First of all, we had to find out what Half Safe was. Mm. It turned out to be a modified amphibious jeep from the Second World War that Ben Carlin turned into a voyaging vehicle in the sense that he totally enclosed it. And he went overland and oversea and eventually circumnavigated the globe. I mean, take a look. This incredible journey got underway in July 1950 when Carlin and his brave wife Eleanor set off from Halifax, Canada, rolling their little vehicle straight into the icy waters of the Atlantic. 32 days later, the expedition returned to terra firma, having conquered an ocean. From here, Half Safe would travel up the West African coast, over the Spanish Sahara to Morocco, on through Gibraltar, Portugal, Spain, and finally France. The journey would pause for a time in England while Ben rebuilt the Half Safe. But soon enough, the Carlins were off again venturing through a host of countries that in many cases are far too volatile to enter without serious consideration today. Countries like Iraq, Turkey, Pakistan and India all fell beneath the wheels of the half safe. The adventure had taken eight years, covering 62,000 kilometres on land and 17,000 kilometres by sea. And to this date, the journey has never been matched, and the smart money would suggest it never will be. No one thought that it was possible that he could do what he did with that ex-World War II Willys Jeep. Everybody was a knocker but he proved them all wrong. <laughs> that is an incredible story. The word nutbag springs to mind to me. <laughs> but uh, he was kind of like an Albie Mangles before there was an Albie. You know? so incredible. Mm -hmm. But uh, Robert, your investigation on the whereabouts of Ben Callan and Half Safe, how'd you go? Uh, I did. Isn't it the most amazing feat of courage and endurance of the last century? Now, I managed to trace Ben's movements after the journey, and he came back to Australia, where sadly he died in 1981. But our Jeep, our little Aussie battler Jeep, half safe, stayed in America uh, with its co-owner. After Ben passed away, they decided that half safe would be on the move again, and we eventually tracked it down to Ben's old school, Guildford Grammar in Western Australia. When Ben Carlin passed away in the early 80s, he left us a half share of this vehicle to the school for permanent display. And the school foundation decided that we would purchase the other half of the vehicle from his business partner in America. And so we became the owners and custodians of the vehicle and its tail. I think it's, as you can see, it's in a prominent part. It's in the heart of the school. And that's by design, not by mistake. We're trying to remind our current boys that this school has a wonderful heritage, a wonderful history, and the colourful characters that have gone before all of us, particularly Ben Carlin, in terms of intrepid explorer, uh, provides, I think, a fantastic role model for young men today. Ben Carlin made a tremendous impression upon me. He was an amazing man. And I think I learned from him that you never give up that you keep trying and you keep going, uh, no matter what the odds are. Interesting though, Ben's legacy may be a great inspiration to the boys of Guildford Grammar, but for those stuck in the confines of Half Safe for months on end, relations could become a little more strained. If you remember back then, Eleanor was Ben's first wife and also his first mate. But after they passed through the Middle East, Eleanor decided to jump ship. So mid-journey, and in desperate need of a first mate, Carlin took out several newspaper adverts in hopes of replacing the departed Eleanor. Soon enough, a young architect named Barry Hanley from Perth answered the call, and young Hanley had very little time to settle in before Carlin hit the gas once again, propelling them into the unknown. I met Ben in a cab, Irma, in January 1956 and we 
travelled from there through Southeast Asia to Japan. I believe we arrived in Japan around about September. But it seems life on board wasn't all that it was cracked up to be, and for Barry, there would be more attractive offers. Dear Ben, I'm sorry that I have to give you this news by letter and not in person, but as I'm not sure when I will be back in Tokyo, it's only fair that I should tell you of my decision as soon as possible. The decision is that I'm not going to carry on any further with the trip. I'm sorry that it has to end this way, Ben. I'll contact you as soon as I get back to Tokyo. Barry. So after another recruiting drive in Japan, Carlin inducted his third first mate, American journalist Boye Lafayette de Monte. The two men set off to complete the journey's final leg, arriving back in Montreal on May the 12th, 1958. He was a special person, and there are only a few that I've met. I was lucky to meet him. And thanks, Graham Jones from Perth, for writing in and unearthing a marvellous little bit of forgotten Australian history. But here at Can We Help, for you, Graham, we thought we'd go a little bit further. And we just thought we'd bring the whole thing in. Bring it in, boys. Here it comes. Barry and the boys are bringing in. Boys from Guildford Graham are bringing this. Look at it. It's a monster. Barry, thank you so much for bringing it back. And thank you, boys, for pushing that in for us. I'm sure it's quite heavy. My pleasure. <laughs> well, here it is. How does it look to you now after all these years? It looks bigger than it was, in my view. Barry, you may have, may have shrunk a little. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the smoke's all dirty. Very likely, I would say. <laughs> Barry, we're all intrigued as to why did he call it half safe? Yeah. Well, that was because at the time that he put the Jeep together, there was a, um, a radio commercial for a roll-on deodorant, and the wording of the commercial was, don't be half safe use this product. Um, I think that amused Ben somewhat and of course it made for interesting stories when he was asked why he called it half safe. Of course, <laughs> of course. Barry, fantastic to meet you. Um, why is it that, uh, and how is it, that you actually managed to eat? Where did you keep food mm. in half safe? Well, when we were at sea, um, we only ate canned food. Um, nice. With the exception of those times when we'd just left land, we may have spent a couple of days where we had fresh fruit and mm -hmm. vegetables. Um, but there were no cooking facilities, so it was very really difficult to... <laughs> Limited menu. <laughs> <laughs> and the reality is that after you'd set into the sort of pattern of life at sea, um, food was not really high on the interest Mm -hmm. level. Well, weren't you also yeah. a heavy smoker? Like, where do they, where we do were both heavy smokers. It must yes. have been fun in a sealed container. I must <laughs> confess we'd left a, a trail of, of cigarettes across <laughs> the southern <laughs> Pacific. <laughs> 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 we were not the best of environmentalists. Um, How long was your journey? How long did you spend in it? Well, I was with Ben on the Jeep. Uh, for nine months. Okay, so in the water, you'd have to do shifts, wouldn't you? Would you do shift yes, work? Yes, yes, we had. It was very difficult to steer, as you can see from its shape. Oh, it's beautiful. It can't be described as seaworthy. <laughs> um, and uh, it was really only possible to steer it for two hours at a time. Right. But to make any distance, we had to travel 24 hours a day. So. Two uh, hours on, two hours off. It was a two hour watch oh. on, two hours on watch off and um, after a day or two that became pretty hard. <laughs> a day or two. <laughs> so you didn't, you know, only 30 days to go. <laughs> it was immensely <laughs> uncomfortable I'm sure. conditions. Um, Having done a little bit of sailing I wouldn't have thought it would be great on the sea, did you, when you were actually going through waves, did it ever get to a point where it rolled and nearly tumbled or? No, there was never any danger of that. Um, there were a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one of the most important ones was that Ben always made sure that when he travelled at sea, he went at the best time of the year in terms of weather conditions. So he attempted to pick um, his weather. No, I think that that was because the uh, the 
jeep had caused so much trouble for him when he crossed the Atlantic that that was one of the lessons he learned. Thank you very much for bringing it in. It's great. And okay. thank you for coming in. Right. And thank you, boys, from Guilford Grammar. Yeah, thank you very thank much, you. fellas. I'm thank sure you hang around the half safe during your lunchtime to go, what the hell is that thing?